Man, how awesome was that? Uh, let me ask, let me ask, are you guys happy to be here today? Let me ask something more. How many of you have something that you can be thankful to our God for today, huh? Amen. I know you do. I know you do. And uh, listen, uh, this is a special day. It's a very different kind of day. And uh, what I mean by that is uh, it's going to be a different kind of sermon. It's not going to be a, the type of sermon that, uh, by the way, if you're a guest here today, um, this is not going to be what you normally would get on a Sunday morning. Um, in fact, it's going to be different in several different ways. Um, number one, uh, I, uh, I'm going to let you out extremely early, okay? Extremely early. Don't laugh at me like that. Come on. Um, no, 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 it's true. It's, well, we'll see. Okay. Um, one of the reasons is uh, some of you know this. Um, I, I had surgery on Tuesday on my knee. And, uh, and I didn't know for sure if I would be up here preaching this Sunday, but I really wanted to be because the sermon that I wrote is a very personal sermon, and you're going to discover why here in just a second. But uh, thank you so much for the prayers, and uh, because obviously uh, they worked very, very well. I could feel them. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to last as long as I can, but then get off stage as quick as I can too, okay? So there's that. But then also I want to let you guys out early so that you can take that card, go grab a turkey. And when I say go grab a turkey, if you need a turkey uh, for this Thanksgiving, let that be a blessing from the people around you to you here today, okay, for this Thanksgiving. If you do not need a turkey, in other words, you know somebody else who could use a turkey much more than you for this Thanksgiving uh, then you take one of those turkeys, and our challenge is that you would go out and find somebody to give it to, bless them with that, uh, love on them, be a light to them during these days, okay? So you do that. That's why we're going to get out early to go grab turkeys as well, okay? And then this is also the Thanksgiving service leading into Thanksgiving week, and this message today is going to be different from the standpoint of it is for me— my thanks to you. Have I told you guys lately how much I love you? Well, I want to do that today, okay? I want to do that today. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, it's so often, and you can, you can see my Bible right here. Uh, the edge of my Bible, you see a lot of these things right here. These are little sticky notes. And I get them quite often from my wife. And uh, just little sticky notes, little, little ways for her to tell me that uh, she loves me. Here's one right here. Do you want me to read it to you? I'm not going to, okay? <laughs> Mind your own business, okay? But it's really sweet. It's really, and see, here's another one. I just love it. Uh, she talks about several things uh, here that she loves about me and why she loves me. And, uh, oh, here's a long one right here. It's a really, this is, ooh, I can't read that in church. Um, <laughs> nah. Now, there's a, I, I get these, I get these love notes all the time, and I just like to keep them right here in my Bible. But you guys know that this Bible is also filled with love notes. Uh, it's a love note um, from God to you, uh, but not even just that. There are love notes in here. In fact, we're going to look at one here today. Um, it's from the Apostle Paul to a church called Philippi, and it's called the Book of Philippians. Um, I don't know if you know much about the Book of Philippians, but it's also known as the book of the Bible that talks most about joy. But not only in talking about joy, he's also talking about thanks. By the way, thanks and joy go hand in hand. Thanks and joy always go hand in hand. If you don't have joy, get some thanks. Have thanks and you'll soon find joy coming along right there with it. Today, what I want to do is take a moment just to tell you. I wish I could, I, I wish I could write each one of you a sticky note. But today, I just I want to tell you how much I appreciate you. 
It's, it's very much in the same way, and, and I'm not saying I'm comparing myself at all to the Apostle Paul, but it's very much the Apostle Paul telling this church, this is why I'm so thankful for you, the book of Philippians. And as I've read through it, Philippians, I see, you know what, he was thankful for that, and I'm thankful for that too with this church, with this body of believers. And so that's what we're going to do here this morning. I'm going to let you out quick, but let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, um, we come with complete thanks, so much thanks in our heart. We can look back not just over the last few days, months, we can look back over years and years and talk about your faithfulness, your goodness, your kindness, the way that you have extravagantly loved each one of us. Father, because of that love, you've transformed us. You've changed our hearts. And you have caused us to then love others. Father, today, we want to express our thanks for others to you. For the other people in our life, for the body of believers, for the church, those sitting near us. We want to say thank you for those and we want to express that to you. Help us do that this morning, Father. And we ask that anybody in here today who feels like they have been lacking in love, Father, we ask that they would feel your amazing embrace today. That your spirit would sweep over them. It would be a tidal wave of love. And they would know the love that you have for them. Not just, not just in here on Sunday, but each and every day of this week and the love that others in here have for them as well. Father, let that be expressed here this morning by your word, by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3, and this is what Paul says. He's writing to the church, and he says, guys, listen, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to go through so many different things that have happened in this church, so many different ways that you guys have expressed amazing love. I'm going to try to, and I'm, I'm, I'm in danger of leaving so much out. Um, and I don't, I'm not doing it intentionally, but there is just so many different things, but I'm going to do my best to cover all the different ways. But um, let me just start off like this. Number one, today I am so thankful, number one, write it down, for your shining witness to the world. For your shining witness to the world. The reason I say shining witness to the world, let me read the scripture. Philippians 1.5. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. Or then in Philippians 2.13, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. He says, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. He says, live clean, innocent lives. In other words, by the way that you live each and every day, you are a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ to the world. He says, live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. What are we talking about here? Well, guys, we can look back. And we can look back, and in fact, I'd like you to think back. Some of you, you weren't around then. But in the, in the early 90s, if you had driven down Jodico Road right here, and you looked on this piece of property, all you would have seen is a whole lot of kudzu, okay? I mean, just one big field of kudzu. One big field of, of, of you would look at that and say, that's worthless property, that's worthless land. But all those years ago, we bought that, this piece of property, that kudzu, we begin to clear it out. We begin to build buildings here, buildings that we prayed would be a light to this community, a light to this world. Back in those days, people were like, where's Henry County at? <laughs> uh, there was nothing. There was nothing. And it's so shocking to me. I was sitting in my office just yesterday, 
and, uh, and I was looking out the window. As I was looking out the window, I was watching car after car turn around through the, the front drive of, of the church here. And the reason they were doing that is because they had driven down Jodica Road on their way to go to Costco. And it was so backed up, they couldn't turn left, so they would just come down and drive through the parking lot, drive through the parking lot. Not only that, people were driving through this way, and then they were also cutting through the back way here because it was backed up on that road right there because of traffic. And so I'm watching all these cars come through, and I think, my goodness, it went from Kudzu to Grand Central Station right here. (laughs) And it was almost as if God said, you don't see any potential in that field of Kudzu right there but watch what I can do. I'll make them come to church by putting a Costco next to them, okay? (laughs) That's what I'll do. And uh, and it's it's shocking to me to see how God has put us here and he's placed us here. And guys, I know so many of you, and, and I do it too sometimes. You're driving around Henry County and you're like, I can't believe all the people who are here. It's way overcrowded. Have you thought that lately? And I've thought that way too, but at the same time, God puts a check in my spirit. He says, I'm bringing people to you so you can minister to them. I'm putting people in your neighborhood there for a reason, for a purpose, because community is going to be that light in this world. Community is going to shine for me. Community is going to share the good news of the gospel with as many people as they can, not even just around right here in this place. And so person after person after person, they're suddenly going, I think I want to move to Henry County, you know, and here they come. And here they come. And God is going to do something great because he's put us right here. Um, Guys, just in the last couple years, have you guys watched all the different baptisms that we've had? Hundreds, hundreds of people have been baptized over the last several years. And in fact, how many of you can remember the baptism we had just after this last Easter? Do you remember that? And it was just lined up forever. People wanting to get baptized, wanting, people having come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. They found that new, their new faith, and now they want to show it to the rest of the world. And so it was lined up. No wonder I had to have knee surgery, right? I mean... <laughs> But, hey, I'd be glad to blow out another knee if we had that many more people continue to come and be baptized in order to share their faith in Jesus Christ. Um, by the way, have you guys noticed that if you get baptized at community, um, you are on, online, you go viral? Have you noticed that? Uh, literally, bab- if you type in baptisms um, on YouTube, community pops up, and it's like over 6 million views. Uh, and people all around the world are watching people and share their faith, that they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and you are a witness to the world. Um, listen, uh, we had, we had uh, um, you guys know we had COVID, and we all thought that was a terrible, terrible thing. But it was during COVID that we realized how we needed to make sure we reached out online all the more. And uh, we had something called AnywhereChurch.com. We bought that, and we put it out there. And even now, listen, guys, there are people who watch. We, we've had people watch and participate in church. By the way, welcome the online people here this morning, if you will, okay? <laughs> Watching from all over the place. Do you guys know that we have people watching from every state in the United States with the exception of one? That one state is Montana, and we think it's because they don't have internet there, okay? (laughs) But every state in the United States, not just that, we have people watching from all around the world on a regular basis, people tuning in and participating in this church, which absolutely blows my mind. It's amazing to me. Uh, Not only that, guys, let me talk a little bit about the missionaries that we have in so many places around the world. We just got a report. Uh, a couple weeks ago, um, from Reverend Lazarus, some of you know that we uh, definitely do a lot of ministry there in India. And uh, in fact, I was so blessed several years ago to be able to travel to India, and I got to participate in one of the graduation services of the pastors there. And I think it was 80 some pastors there. By the way, uh, if you've uh, been keeping track, India is rapidly closing. Uh, their doors to anything Christian, uh, to the gospel. In fact, Compassion International had to pull their entire organization out of India because of the crackdown by the government and the increased persecution to those that are Christian. But while that is happening, at the same time, we're churning out, we're, we're participating in churning out more and more Christian pastors who will go to all different communities there in India. I, I told you, I had, I had the, 
the, the opportunity to participate in the graduation. I think it was 80-some pastors uh, several years ago that we graduated. And one of the pastors, she was 88 years old, an 88-year-old woman who had just graduated to go and be a pastor herself there in India. How awesome is that, huh? Well, not just that. Listen. Uh, the report I got a couple weeks ago from Reverend Lazarus in a place called Punjab, uh, or an area called Punjab, which is uh, not too far from Delhi. I, I'm told it's northwest of Delhi. Um, 106 pastors um, are training right now, and they're going to graduate here in 2023. That's pretty amazing right there. And so there's that ministry in India, not just in India. Guys, do you know that right now we are supporting, we're, we're, we're participating with a ministry in Brazil. And uh, some of you actually got to see Andrew uh, years ago when he came and spoke on the stage but he runs a ministry where they continue to go and rescue children off the streets of Brazil. And uh, these are children that I've personally witnessed and seen crawling out of the gutters where they live. And uh, they bring them in, they feed them, they give them a place to live, they give them a home. So that's Brazil. Not only that, guys, uh, we have missionaries in Montenegro. Some of you are going, where is Montenegro, right? Um, Montenegro, um, it's a beautiful place, but uh, it's, it's primarily Muslim, and we have missionaries right there in Montenegro that are witnessing, that are sharing the good news of Christ there. Trinidad, how many of you guys knew that we have, have missionaries in Trinidad? How many of you want to go on a mission trip to Trinidad, huh? Yeah, exactly, I know. Uh, but they continue to train pastors that travel all throughout um, South America and minister there. Guatemala, Hungary, France. Uh, not just that, but even here, guys. You guys know that every Sunday uh, we have people going out from this congregation who will give up worshiping sometimes here in the auditorium with everybody else. And they'll go on out to maybe exit ministries where they'll bring the gospel to this place over here. And exit, when I say exit, there are different exits where they find homeless people living throughout Atlanta and they minister to those people there. Uh, there are hug cookouts. By the way, how many hug cookout people, uh, all, all the hug cookouts? people and uh, let's just say the out team raise your hand people on the out team give these guys a round of applause man they are it's amazing Oh, by the way, I also want you to give a round of applause to the people who put together our online ministry. Max Hall is back there in the back and the rest of the team right there. Let them know how much you appreciate them doing that every Sunday. And I didn't even finish talking about the online ministry, the online campus. And by the way, there's so many of you out there online and, uh, and you live in the area and we haven't seen you since COVID. Hey, come on back. We want to see you. We would love to embrace you and put our arms around you. Visit us back once in a while, but we know how amazing the online ministry team has put that together. It's fun to, it's fun to sit at home and worship, is it not? Huh? I love it, man. You sit there and you can eat breakfast. Well, well yeah, it's awesome. Anyway, uh, not just that, guys. There was a, this, was, this one touched my heart because uh, there's, a, there's a group, and they went even just yesterday over to the Oaks, and they put on a worship service over there, the Oaks Assisted uh, f uh, Living Facility. And uh, they gave their testimonies, and, and they preached, and they, uh, they sang some songs. And, uh, I mean, just think about that, sharing the gospel. You give up a Saturday. You give up one of your Saturdays, and you go and you spend it ministering to people uh, right there. And give those people a round of applause. I mean, the way they minister like that is absolutely amazing. And so on and on and on, guys, I could go, but it's the same thing where Paul says to the Philippian church, guys, you're, you're amazing in that you have come alongside the ministry here and you continue to be a witness. I'm thankful that you are a shining witness to this world. The second thing that I want you to write down is this, number two, I am so thankful for your sacrificial service and extreme generosity to those in need. For your sacrificial service and extreme generosity to those in need. The reason that we're able to give away all these turkeys today, the reason we're going to give away a whole bunch of hams around at Christmas time, the reason that we put on big events like Trunk and Treat and minister that way, the reason that we continue to send people out is because the person sitting next to you is extremely, extremely generous. Do me a favor, look at them and say, thank you for your generosity. Thank you. 
Paul says this, Philippians 2.17, but I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, and that's just the same as your faithful service is an offering to God. And he says, and I want all of you to share that joy. Listen, guys, I want to recount just real quick, um, just the last couple months of your generosity and your giving and how that you've served so much and you've ministered in such a huge way. Uh, you guys know that uh, the moment that uh, uh, it broke out over there um, in Israel that I got up here that next Sunday, and uh, there's an organization that we support called Jews for Jesus, and they had about 50 people uh, there in Israel that would go to all the different most hard-hit areas where people were in need, and I said, hey, listen, uh, if you want to give to this, then you can do it online or you can do it through the church, and you guys poured out in such a generous way, so much that the Jews for Jesus person, they contacted me. They're blown away by your generosity and what you guys did. Thank you, thank you, thank you for responding and doing that. Give yourself a hand for that, okay? That was awesome. Not only that, about the same time, I was told by our out team that we're running out of clothes. People are much, many people uh, needed clothes this time of the year. And uh, um, we're running out in what we have usually in store back there and in our trailers. And uh, so on that Sunday, I got up and I said, uh, go into your closet. Uh, if you got two pairs of something, uh, take one pair. If you got this and you don't need this, or take it. And not only that, I, I know some people went in their closet. They didn't get the worst stuff they had. They got some of the best stuff that they had, and they brought it. And, and so much so that the, the out team trailer out there was covered over with clothes and all that you guys did, bringing that stuff in to the point. They were pretty much saying, stop it, stop it, okay? Um, your generosity is too much. And so that's an awesome thing. You brought the clothes. Not only that, we had canned food drive, and you guys bringing in all the different uh, canned foods for people for this time of the year. That was big. Um, you guys know right now out there we're starting what we call the, uh, um, uh, uh, what, what would we call it? Uh, Angel tree, angel tree, that's it, angel tree. And uh, we know every time we do that, angel tree, uh, angel tree is, is kids who would not have Christmas otherwise, and we have people go up and decide that, hey, I'm going to sponsor this kid. And uh, you, you, every time we do that, it's like people, boom, they hit that table and they grab all, all, the, all the angels up as fast as they can because they want to participate in being generous to children who wouldn't have have Christmas otherwise, and so that's going on. You guys remember when I told you about Big Tip Sunday, huh? And uh, which the sad thing was most servers uh, who have been servers for any time at all say the worst day to, to be a server is Sunday, which is really sad, they said, because normally church people give the worst tips. And uh, so we decided, you know what, that's not a good witness for us, and so I challenged you, go out to eat after church and leave the biggest tip that you can and let that be a way where we say we love you. We shine a light there in that place. And so you guys did just that. And I even saw you, some of you posting about it saying we left this tip and left this tip just to bless our server on that day with that generosity. Um, not only that, guys, um, this is exciting to me. And I just want to give you a quick update on this. Some of you know this time of the year, four years ago, four years ago, we began something called the Bold Campaign. How many of you remember that, huh? We did the bold campaign. And uh, so we were excited because we wanted to be able to take our $7.3 million debt here at this church um, for this place, for this campus. $7.3 million was our mortgage. And we wanted to, to uh, chip away at that, to, to, to get rid of that with the purpose of not just us living debt-free because we challenged we challenge the church through FPU to do the same but we wanted as a body of believers to be able to live debt-free with the purpose of being able to take that $70,000 that we pay every month on a mortgage. And if we could put that towards meeting people's needs, can you imagine what $70,000 a month would be able to do in loving on people and meeting the needs of our community and reaching out? And so that was our goal, and that was four years ago. And as soon as we announced that, COVID happened, right? 
And so I remember Kim and I would be coming here to the office and we're going, we can't have church, bold, it's ridiculous, why do we even do this? It's not going to happen, but oh my goodness, the generosity of God's people. Not only did you give and give regularly, but you gave above and beyond even your regular tithes and offerings to the to. to to, here's where we're at. Here's what's so amazing. In, in just three years, we took down our debt from 7.3 down to 3.9. And guys, listen to this. We are well on our way in the next few years to be completely debt free. How amazing is that, huh? And I cannot wait, I cannot wait to see how God is going to use us all the more to love on people, to minister, to meet people's needs here in this community and beyond. Um, I sent out a survey. How many of you got that? Did anybody see that? Okay. Uh, hopefully you'll get that if you didn't get it before. But I sent out an email. And the email, I need you to help me out with this. We want to continue to reach more people, to meet more people's needs, to love more people in our community. And so we're asking our community, what is it that you need? How is it that we can love on you? How is it we can, we can, and so if you will send that out and help me, then that is simply the church, this church saying, we want to love people all the more around us in our community. So that's going out. I encourage you to please help me do that. One more thing in the last several months, guys. Um, we were able to finally finish up the building, uh, the children's home there in uh, Uganda. And uh, we got them, we got them all moved in. And uh, I got them, I said, hey, send us a video of the place. And so we've got that. And I want you to take a minute and just kind of watch. How awesome is that? Um, hopefully we can get over there and um, visit them again soon. And actually, we're going to be taking more teams. And if you'd like to go and participate in that, uh, we'll get you signed up heading on over there to see the babies. Um, and by the way, guys, um, these children that are brought in, uh, Kim and I get uh, the regular updates of uh, the latest child that they'll um, bring into this home. Uh, happens uh, 
multiple sometimes uh, times a week, and uh, and it's it's. Uh, uh, it breaks your heart. It breaks your heart to see what some of these babies have been through. Uh, but now that it's thrilling to be able to see that they have a home and a place and a group of people around them who will love and care for them. Um, by the way, uh, I think I counted out there um, next to Angel Tree, 13 of our children that still need sponsorships, regular sponsorships. If you would like to be a sponsor, I think it has the picture of the child out there, um, and you can participate and be a sponsor for one of those children. So uh, if you'll take a look at those out there um, today, you can, uh, you can kind of then track that child and, and get to know them, and, which is a very, very exciting thing. So there's that, guys, number two is I'm so thankful for your sacrificial service and your extreme generosity to those in need, those who serve here at this place on a regular basis, not just here, but even around the world. Number three, finally, I'm so thankful for your enduring love for one another, for your enduring love for one another. And it really is, it shows continually here at this place, each and every Sunday. I think I told you guys that there's a lady here who stopped me and told me one Sunday that community, this church is the only place where she knows she can get a hug each week. And uh, I think how awesome is that, that here's a community. Some of you know just the love from last Sunday when somebody took a minute to, to, to share with you and to, and to tell you that they were going to be willing to pray for you throughout this last week. And continually, guys, you express your love to one another in amazing, amazing ways. Uh, Philippians 2, 1 through 2, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy, he says, by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Last night, I was standing in the kitchen, and uh, my wife, Kim, was, and by the way, I've told you guys she's an amazing, amazing cook, right? Uh, chef, chef, I, I'm going to say chef, and, and I'm actually her sous chef, Okay. Um, which means, which means she tells me what she needs me to do, like clean that bowl over there and pick up. Yeah. And so, but I'm happy to do it. And so I'm standing there in the kitchen. I love to watch her cook. You know what she made me last night? Yeah, huh? Huh? Homemade chicken pot pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better ooh. That was. <laughs> it's crazy good. But. Uh, but I'm watching as she's putting all this stuff together, and, and, uh, and, and I'm seeing all the different ingredients. And, uh, you know, obviously there's the chicken. She puts the chicken in that, and there's a chicken stock, and that goes in there. Um, there's peas. Peas go in it. Mushrooms go in it. Celery. And there's, there's fresh carrots and, and, uh, and, and just on and on and all the different ingredients. And, and, and it just kind of occurred to me, it occurred to me uh, what a beautiful thing chicken pot pie is, right? But, but it takes a lot of ingredients. And, and, and the celery can't come and say, hey, I don't, I don't hang out with carrots. And the, and, and the peas can't say, hey, I don't get with the mushrooms, man. No, you know, and the onions, onions got to say, hey, I'm with the chicken in this, okay? You see what, what, without all that, it's not as beautiful. But how beautiful it is when it all comes together, how beautiful the church is when it all comes together in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And each Sunday I get to look around, I get to look around, and I see... I see people come together who have nothing in common, absolutely nothing in common, but they come together here in this place and they love one another. Guys, do you know, this is such an extraordinary place. His church, this church, is such an extraordinary place that we even, even here, we even here, we have some Alabama fans who love Georgia fans. Okay. Listen, listen, even, even in this room, I know some Saints fans who love some Falcons fans. It's amazing, right? Now, follow me here, follow me here. Do you guys know, even in this room, we have some boomers who love some Gen Zers and vice versa. 
How amazing is that, right? Do you guys know, even in this room right here, we have some bald people who love hairy people <laughs> and vice versa. Even in this room, guys, do you guys realize we have some Democrats who love Republicans yes. and vice versa? Do you guys realize in this room we have a whole mix of people who might have nothing in common except one common thing, and the one common thing that is the biggest thing, the most, is their love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as that love takes over our hearts, each one of us, to love the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember one of my favorite songs from, from back in the 70s. Yes, I'm that old, okay? Was by a guy uh, named Keith Green. And he sang a song, You Put This Love in My Heart, talking about you put this love in my heart. You put this love in my heart. And it's that love that he has put in your heart that pours over, pours over into love for one another. And it's that love for one another that makes this a city on a shining hill. Let me read it to you. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. I'm so thankful, so thankful for your enduring love for one another. I'm so thankful for you. Guys, I love you, and I praise God and thank God for you. Let's continue to do what he's called us to do. Community Bible Church in the world in which he's put us to bring people to Jesus Christ. I want us to bow our heads, close our eyes. I spoke of the love that he's put in our heart. Friend, if you do not know that love, if you do not, you're missing it all. You're missing it all. And here today, though, you can know the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here you can know the love of a heavenly father. If you'll simply in this moment, quiet in your, quietly in your own mind, call out to Jesus and say something like this, Jesus, today I'm putting my faith in you. I, I do believe that you died for me on the cross. And right now, the best I know how, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin, come into my life. And be my God, my Savior, my friend. Friend, when you pray that prayer and you mean it with your heart, say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Best decision you could ever make. Father, I thank you for those who put their faith and trust in your son, Jesus Christ, here today. Father, thank you for the home that we have in heaven waiting for us. Thank you that you welcomed us into your family. Thank you for the love. Help us to show the love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.